What's up everybody, this is Danny. Today I'm going to be benchmarking the Snapdragon 801 processor versus the brand new Snapdragon 805, which is being represented by the Galaxy S5 LTE A. This is the first device to sport that Snapdragon 805 processor with a bumped up 3GB of RAM and the brand new Adreno 420 GPU. And remember, it also sports a quad HD display with higher pixel density, so we'll see how these actually benchmark against each other. If you did not know, they are both quad core processors. So the first thing we're gonna start with is Antutu benchmark, and you're gonna see that the Snapdragon 801 chip, which is actually older, scored better on the first couple of runs for me. So I had to make sure that wasn't a fluke. I kept running it. I ran it three more times, and I was consistently getting slightly higher scores on the Snapdragon 805, which is actually expected. Of course, it's a brand new chip, but the gains are not mind blowing whatsoever. And if you look at the CPU, float point is a little higher, but what's impressive is the GPU, the 2D and 3D graphics, it actually keeps up with the 801 with more pixels being pushed on the screen. So that's pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and move on to Velamo. There's a couple of things that this benchmark tests, but I'm gonna look at a few different things like the internet browser score, which is just slightly higher on the LTEA with the Snapdragon 805, and the multi-core is also just slightly higher. So incremental gains here on those two benchmark scores. Next up, we're going to look at Geekbench 3, and you can see 2945 here on the Snapdragon 801, 3147 on the Snapdragon 805. I ran it a couple different times, and they are pretty consistent on the scores, slightly higher on the 805. That seems to be the theme across all the benchmarks we're just seeing some incremental increases in performance. So we're gonna take it back to the old school here and bring back Quadrant Standard. I remember running this all the time when the new dual core processors were coming out back in the day and just getting blown away by these scores. And I remember these scores were extremely important before, not as much anymore. But what's funny is that the 801 processor outperforms it every single time. I ran this about 10 times just to make sure and consistently the 801 actually outperforms the 805. But I don't know if Quadrant really matters anymore. But we're gonna start now with GFX Bench and test this 420 GPU versus the 330. Just to remind you, the LTE A does have a quad HD display with much higher pixel density. So if this had a 1080p display versus 1080p display, then we probably see much higher gains in the GPU scores. But let's see how it actually stacks up with the quad HD display. So looking at the 1080p T-Rex off-screen test, you can see that the frames per second and the score is lower on the Adreno 420 versus the older 330. But the 1080p Manhattan off-screen is actually higher. But if you go to these low-level tests and scroll to the bottom, you'll see that the Adreno 420 is actually doing some things a little bit better. If you look at the render quality here, Look at how much higher the render quality is than the Adreno 330. So I'm not quite sure if this device is actually even optimized for the Adreno 420 GPU or not, but the scores are a little bit inconsistent here on this test, but you can see it's just slightly higher under certain tests. So take that for what it is. I'm not quite sure about optimization, but it looks like that there's a slight performance decrease if you look at it just on overall score. But that's kind of to be expected with the new Quad HD display and the amount of pixels that it's actually pushing around. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Nanomark 2. This is also an old school benchmark that I used to use all the time. Very simple GPU test, just shows you how many frames per second that it's going in. It looks like it's pretty much consistently staying at 60, maybe dropping a little bit more, but look how it's very similar. Even with the Quad HD display, the Adreno 420 is able to keep up with a 330. Looks like it is almost performing exactly the same. So let's just see what the score comes out to be like. It's almost done here and it looks like that it's only running one frame per second lower. So take that for what it is. I think that's actually a good thing, pushing more pixels around and having almost the same frames per second. All right, well, last but not least, we're gonna finish this up with 3D Mark. And I started these at the same time and the Galaxy S5 LTE on the right is actually going a little bit ahead of it. So let's go ahead and finish this benchmark up and see what the actual scores are. 
And just as expected, the LTEA with the Adreno 420 actually scores a little bit higher. So that's actually pretty impressive once again because of the Quad HD display. So it looks like the Adreno 420 GPU is very capable in pushing all these high pixels around. As you can see that 104 frames per second, 68.9 frames per second on the Adreno 330 on the graphics test one and two and you can see that it's 109.3 frames per second and 77.2 frames per second on the adreno 420 so very capable and you can see that the 420 is definitely bumped up a little bit on gpu performance all right guys well that does it for me with the benchmark showdown between the snapdragon 801 and the brand new snapdragon 805 processor and it looks more like just an incremental performance update here but there's no real guarantees that this LTEA version of the Samsung Galaxy S5 actually has optimization for this chip at all so we'll actually see once more devices get the Snapdragon 805 processor what these benchmarks look like in the future but let me know what you guys think of this and let me know if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more videos like this and follow me on Twitter at super scientific for I'm on there almost all the time and i will see you guys in the next video and thank you for watching